I was one of Judas' disciples. I was his treasurer, Judas Iscariot. I was with him for over three years and got to witness his life. And uh, he, he was like no other person that lived on this earth. He was, I mean, a man, but he calmed the seas. He walked on water. He turned water into wine. It was breathtaking. I mean, it was really cool to be, be around him and see him heal all these people from all their diseases. He fed the 5,000. And uh, I just, just something about, he always talked about how his time on the earth was short and how he was going to destroy the temple and then raise it again in three days. And I just, I really didn't understand the spiritual things. You know, he was always talking in like riddles or telling stories. He was a good man. He, he cared and loved about each of us deeply and I cared for him. I mean, yeah, I know I, I did some shady things. I, I was greedy, I took some money, but it was just for extra spending money, you know, like just a little here and there. But that was nothing compared to the ultimate act that I committed. You see, the Pharisees and religious leaders, they hated Jesus. They couldn't stand the sight of him. And every time he would perform a miracle, they would get mad at him and, you know, he would just become more and more indignant towards them. And uh, they just wanted to get rid of this nuisance once and for all. He challenged them at every turn and called them out for their sinful ways. And, and all they were waiting for was an opportunity, somebody willing to betray Jesus into their angry hands. I don't know what I was thinking. Something came over me like a presence, a demonic presence, a force. It, and before I knew it, there I was standing before the religious leaders, willing to offer Jesus into their hands for a price. 30 pieces of silver was the going rate to hand over the Messiah, the Savior. I credibly accepted the offer and I set out to make my plan. And my plan was this, is that when we approach the garden, the man on whom I placed a kiss on his cheek would be the one that they wanted. And so the religious leaders and the soldiers who were dressed decked out from head to toe like real life gladiators dressed for battle were walking with me and I was, I was so confused because Jesus never posed a physical violent threat. He, he never hurt anybody. He just claimed to be God. But I had to hold my end of the bargain. And so we walked on. Found Jesus in the garden and he was with Peter, James and John. And I walked up to him and I placed a kiss on his cheek looked right in my eyes. I saw so much love, but I also saw disappointment. And then he asked me, Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? His words cut deep to my heart, and before I had a chance to really grasp it, Peter grabbed a sword and cut off one of the soldier's ears, and Jesus picked it up and said, you know, no, this is not how we change the world. I have to do this. And then he healed the guard's ear dragged him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, to be questioned. Over and over again, they questioned him and they threw false accusations against him. They had false eyewitnesses at him and they mocked him and they, they were spitting in his face and they beat him with their fists. And the next morning I heard their verdict. They condemned Jesus to die. What did I do? He didn't deserve this. I mean, I, I just thought they were going to put him in the jail for a couple days. I didn't realize they were going to go to this extreme. And I, I tried to fix it. Really, I did. I ran back and I threw the pieces of silver on the floor. And I said, I've sinned. I betrayed an innocent man. But they, they wouldn't listen to me. They didn't care. They just wanted him dead. Dead. Oh, God. What have I done? I betrayed the Savior of the world. I should be dying in his place, yet he's the one walking to Calvary. I killed him. There's no more reason for me to live.